coming to you from the studios of STL TV in Forest Park. It's the best of the STL. On tonight's show, the director of 23 Minutes to Sunrise, Jay Kanzler. Founder of the Pink Angel, Chantel Nixon Clark. Heating things up in the kitchen, PJ's Golicious Backyard Barbecue. Your entertainment for tonight, Jerry Shaneberger. And here are your hosts. Please welcome Cassandra Walker and Ivy Hartman. Fair and water, rain or shine. Thought you were a friend of man. Thought I'd seen all sides of you that had not been true. I met you on a sunny day. You seemed to chase the clouds away. You were the calm before the storm, but I had not been warned. Yeah, you were the perfect stranger. Welcome to the show. I'm Cassandra Walker. And I'm Ivy Hartman. Ivy, spring is here. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Although that can mean a little bit of tumultual time, tumultuous times here mm -hmm. in the St. Yep. Louis area. We yep. had some, some hairdos messed up because of the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why that's even such. bother? Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah, that's so true. We could put a hat on. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of that, we have all kinds of looks, but we've gone through a lot of different That's things. With the, all the years we've been hosting this show, a lot of different co-hosts. <laughs> and metamorphosis, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's remained constant, uh, besides you and I, uh -huh. has been Sam's Club being a yes. great sponsor to us. Sam's has been a great sponsor. They've been there from the very beginning, and they take care of all of our needs. They never say no. So we always tell you, make sure you go out to your local Sam's Club and get a membership if you don't have one and make sure you shop there because they have wonderful, wonderful items. I'm there almost every week. Yeah, I know. It's a great thing. And, you know, we uh, regularly give away a gift card yep. to Sam's Club while we're here. And yes. our guests get to eat things from Sam's Club as well. And we yep. have a special guest in the studio audience. We do. Audience Stephanie's here from Sam's Club. I want her to give a wave out to all of you in TV land so you can see a face behind it all. <laughs> Welcome, Stephanie. She makes things happen. She makes it happen. And we are so glad. We are so glad. She gets it done for us. So thank you so much. Now, Ivy, I know that you um, you go on vacation in the summer. So how do you keep up with what's going on at its TV station when you're traveling you know the what? Rocky Mountains? I have this new phone, and it lets me do. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can I can do pretty much anything on there. But Twitter, uh -huh. Facebook, it, it makes it so seamless and easy. Absolutely. And you know, if you go to YouTube you, on your phone, you can watch the show as well. Yep. And I got a nice big screen for that, and I can go to <laughs> stltv.net and see it too. So I love it. But we won't tell that she lost her other phone. That's why you get a new one. Ah, wink, wink, lost it. <laughs> anyway, LJ, how about you? What you doing in the audience? Do you have a phone over there? I do not have a phone in the studio with me, but I got a pretty good phone in the car. But I didn't have to have a phone because I'm over here with the prettiest people in St. Louis. <laughs> Look at this. Just a beautiful, pretty audience. And you too can be part of the Pretty People audience here at the Best of the STL. Just give us a call. We got tickets. We want to give them to you. 314-552-2970. And you too can be a part of our studio audience. Speaking of our studio audience, I am sitting here with one of our beautiful pretty people here, Chantel Nixon-Clark. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You are a part, a founder of an amazing organization. Tell us about this organization, Pink Angels. Yes, Pink Angels is a organization that's specific to breast cancer. Uh, we provide moral support and financial support to those that are battling breast cancer. Now, that's an interesting take on it because you're really providing support, not just financially. Absolutely. Why would an organization like this be so important to you? I myself is a three-year breast cancer survivor this month in, in April. Uh, Shut up. You look good, girl. Thank you. You look good. Thank you. And I, too, know how it feels to, to be battling something so dramatic and the support that comes out of it. So people want to help. We always want to help. You guys have events coming up. There's something you're going to do pretty soon. Yes, we will have a team for the Susan G. Coleman Walk. Um, if you would like to be a part of the team, uh, my email address is mrs.nixonclark at gmail.com, and you can come be a part of our team. We would love to have you. So what if I want to do something beyond the team? How can I help this organization on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis? 
just providing that moral support to any of your family members or coworkers or friends uh, that may be battling this disease, you can too also provide that moral support to them as well. And if not, they can contact us on the email, Mrs.NixonClark at gmail.com, or they can contact me at 314-397-3321 to get more information. So you said even your husband. Absolutely. It's good to have a good man. Absolutely. <laughs> so your yeah. husband is involved with the organization as well. That is correct. Um, I would like to, I am preparing a segment where the husbands too also provide moral support to the significant others and also help them and give them, you know, more support uh, in that area as well. So when people are fighting this and needing this moral support, you guys have come up with this wonderful motto that I love. Tell us that motto. My motto is that the pink angels allow the women that are battling breast cancer to hang up their wings and allow the pink angels to carry them through this journey. Hang up your wings. Let the pink angels carry. I mean, if I ever had to turn in some wings and let you guys carry me, that would be a great We would love to have you. Now, one more time, because people want to help. They want to help. Don't you guys want to help? See, they, even in the studio audience, they want to help. Give us your email address and the phone number again so people can know how to get in touch with you and how they can hang up their wings and let you carry them all through. Absolutely. The email address is Mrs. M-R-S dot Nixon, N-I-C-K-S-O-N-C-L-A-R-K at gmail.com. And the phone number again is 314-397-3321. You are such a beautiful angel. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on Thank the show. You. Now, we have our Sam's Club representative here. We already said hi to you, but you've given us something to give out already for the show. We already pre-selected our winner before the show started, so I am looking for rrr, Diane Cross. Is she in the audience? Diane. All right. <laughs> Diane Cross is the winner of our Sam's Club gift card today, and we're going to make sure that she gets this. Cara had some stuff she was doing before, so come on, Cara. What's going on in that kitchen over there? So the crew and I headed out for a bite to eat today, and we ended up right here at BJ's Backyard Barbecue, which is located right here on McCausland in Manchester. Now, BJ, who's the owner of this place, has the most amazing barbecue, and you've been said to have the best in St. Louis. Yes, ma'am. We've heard that from our customers. From your customers. You know that that is true. <laughs> That's what they're telling us. Well, why are they telling you that? Well, here at BJ's, the sauce is not the boss, and the season is the reason. We season up our food and let it marinate for 48 hours before we grill it. And we grill fresh daily. Okay, so you think that um, that's the reason why your barbecue is the best? Yes, ma'am. We serve our food fresh daily. We don't refrigerate, we don't freeze, everything rolls out fresh. Fantastic, fantastic. So it's super fresh. Well, I tell you what, what are we gonna make today? We're gonna do some turkey ribs, yes. some rib tips, yeah. and some ribs. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be eating too, right? Absolutely, we're gonna fill you Yay. guys up. <laughs> That's why I love this, and the crew's loving it too. So we'll be right back with BJ, the owner of BJ's Backyard Barbecue, as soon as possible. But first, let's go back to the studio. Awesome. Our next guest, Ivy, I want some of that barbecue, by the way. Uh, I know. <laughs> Splits his time between practicing law and making films. And his latest film encompasses dreams gone bad, missed opportunities, love, fear, and death. All those light topics, of you know. Yeah. Right. Sounds like life. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Here to tell us more, please help us welcome Mr. Jay Kanzler. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Jay, welcome. Thank you. So happy Thank to you. have you. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm surprised that Ivy and I didn't break out in some type of theatrical um, audition, because normally we try to do that. We have never really picked up, though, Ivy. No, no, we never picked up. Evidently, we need to be get, getting with a casting director yes, here I in St. So. Louis in order to get into <laughs> the film industry. Now that I've, I've met both of you and I've been here, you're high on the list for the next we one. We appreciate that. Thanks. We'll give you our, our numbers. Yeah. Jay, now, when I think about what you do, I think about John Grisham, because he's a lawyer and he also writes books which turned into movies. Right. How do you combine the two or do you keep them separate? No, I think, you know, I don't think you can live in silos in, you know, your life. Everyone's busy and I think I just kind of, the things that I do overlap. Mm -hmm. I find the, you know, I practice law because it pays the bills mm -hmm. and I enjoy what I do, but I also find that to be part of the ministry, um, and, you know, as a, a member of the clergy. Yes. The filmmaking, 
um, you know, it's the same thing. There, the ideas come from there, um, the people that you meet, um, the ability to work with people. It all kind of plays uh, in with the, the whole overall picture. You mentioned it, so we've got to highlight it, because we didn't really <laughs> talk about it in your intro, the fact that you are an associate priest for a church here in the St. Louis area. And so you studied undergraduate at St. Louis University, went to theology school there. So talk about that experience. Well, um, I, I, I'm very pleased that I'm an, I'm an assistant priest at St. Peter's Episcopal Church over in Ladue. Um, I've been there for about six years, seven years. Um, it was a second vocation for me. I did. I was a lawyer for 14 years and decided it was if I was ever going to do what I had thought about doing uh, for a very long time, which was, you know, um, studying theology, pursuing a vocation uh, in, in the ministry, that I needed to do it. And huh. so um, that's what I did. And I did it at St. Louis University. And um, I was a member of St. Peter's Congregation um, before I became a member of the clergy. And I've stayed there ever since. They all so seem exciting. like antithesis to one another, though. You think so? I do. I feel like I being an attorney that. and then being a film producer and then having a strong the, religious background, I wouldn't have thought they all go together. Oh, yeah, and so nicely. Yeah. And you think yeah. about um, the fact that really, I think it gives you insight, a lot of insight yeah. on what to write about and what people are feeling. Because what it boils down to is everyone has the same needs. They mm -hmm. want to be loved, they want to be accepted, they want to have goals. Absolutely. What is the most difficult part about filmmaking, do you think? I, I think it is being constrained by finances. It is an incredibly <laughs> expensive endeavor. Um, so you have these great ideas and you put it down on paper or you read a script and you say, that's what I want to do. And then you realize just how much that's going to cost. And you say, well, you know what? Maybe we won't have all the big sets. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe we won't have um, you know, Harrison Ford, but, um, but you do what you can. And that's what a filmmaker is. A filmmaker is someone who makes films. And they, whether that's a, uh, a film that you've made with, uh, you know, your handheld camera or whether it's on a set, um, but you're making films. You make the best film that you can and you tell the best story that you can uh, in that film. Talk about getting started in the film industry and some of the other films that you made. We, we will talk about 23 Minutes Till Sunrise here in a little bit, but you've done some other things too. Big fan of films. Used to go to a lot of film festivals and I would see um, you know, young filmmakers, independent filmmakers, and I'd say, you know, I really want to do that. And I'd go to lunch and I was practicing law at the time and I would go to lunch with my friends. I'd say, I'm going to do a documentary about this. Or I'm going to make a film about this. And it got to be almost a joke. It's like, yeah, you are, Jay. Sure you are, Jay. Sure you are. <laughs> And one day, um, I was president of Circus Flora, um, the, the local circus here in town. And um, the Flying Willendas have long been a part of Circus Flora. They were recreating the seven-person pyramid where they get up and they stack up mm -hmm. one another on that. And they were doing it for the first time in many, many, many years. And I got out of the shower one day and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to make a documentary film about Circus Flora and the Flying Willendas. And she said, sure you are. Sure you yeah, are. I said it. I said, no, this time I'm going to do it. And I went out and I found people that um, you know, knew what they were doing. That's you know what, I'm going to hold perfect. you on that thought right there. Mm -hmm. sounds wonderful. We want to parlay over to 23 Minutes to Sunrise, but we got to take a quick, quick sure. break. And we'll come back and talk a little bit more about that and how that was a springboard to what you're doing yes, now. Yes, yes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Wow. Mm -hmm. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. sees me through.
welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, now, we stopped when you were talking about doing the Circus Flore and, and the documentary. And, and all I wanted to finish is that you, I went out and I decided I would find people that knew what they were doing that could help me, that would teach me along the way. The same way that with 23 Minutes, I went out and kind of collaborated with Chris Benson, who is the best cinematographer in town here, mm -hmm. and has, uh, was just an absolute essential part of 23 Minutes and putting that together, turned into a producer and almost co-directed with me. Wow. That 23 wonderful. Minutes, let's talk about mm -hmm. this, because mm -hmm. it's a phenomenal feature-length film yep. just released recently. <laughs> The thing Less that really, than a month ago. yeah, wow. Eric Roberts, Mia yeah. Peoples, right. good names. But the thing that really astounded me was that it was shot in eleven days. It was shot wow. in eleven days at night um, in a diner in Sojay, Illinois, uh, a working diner. We would get there at uh, about five o'clock at night. We would turn the diner into a movie set. Mm -hmm. Um, we would film for 12 hours and then we would turn it back into a, a working diner so that the first shift in, uh, in Soge could come in and enjoy breakfast and we'd do it again the wow. next day. Wow. We talked a little bit about the premise of the movie. Would you mm -hmm. care to tell a little sure. of the story? What the, these people have all ended up at a diner mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, late in the evening. And two of the characters, Eric Roberts um, and an, another lady, Haley Bush, a young lady from, from town here, um, they meet up. They're in, uh, going there. And um, she has a gift uh, that's been given to her by Eric Roberts, a gift that she's had for some 300 years and wants to give back. Um, she doesn't grow old. She doesn't die. And she says, I, I want to give it back. I want to grow up. I want to live a life. Mm -hmm. And he says, ah, you're a whiner. But I tell you what, you find somebody else in this diner in the next 23 minutes that'll take that gift, I'll let you out of the deal. And it is then about this kind of these interrelationships that are going on inside the diner mm -hmm. and her efforts to kind of try to, um, I say, pawn off mm -hmm. this gift onto other people. And so you wrote? I co-wrote it based on a, um, a story mm -hmm. uh, by Pat Pinkston, who was a, 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 co-wrote the script with me. Mm -hmm. And I directed it. And then um, I also took out the trash after the dinner. And, and all, you know, all those things that, yeah, all the things that you have to do if you're going to make independent film. Lots of people came together to make this film. I'm sure. One story I really liked was also about how we were able to attract the talent to this film. Mm -hmm. And they all have a St. Louis connection. They do. Um, you know, I went through a casting director here in town for a lot of the, the folks, uh, Joni uh, Tackett. And, and Joni was able to go out and find people that are in L.A., working in L.A., but grew up here mm -hmm. and were very happy to come back. Uh, Tom Sandoval, who is uh, one of the, the, the folks, um, and Haley Bush, who was going to, you know, um, but were willing to come back here. Uh, Dingani Beza, the, mm -hmm. the lead. Um, Dingani was on Harry's Law at the time. Uh, Tom and his girlfriend in the movie are actually boyfriend and girlfriend, and they're on Vanderpump Rules these days mm. out in L.A. So um, I just went out for Eric Roberts. I just loved Eric Roberts and, and actually went out and contacted his wife directly and, wow. um, and got her the script, and she said, yeah, you know what? He would like to do it. <laughs> oh, so, smart move with your yeah, wife. Yeah. I like the name of your production company, Day of Fun Pictures. That's right. How did you come up with that? You know, it just... That's how I look at filmmaking. It's hmm. just a day of fun. It's really no more uh, than that. Mm -hmm. And filmmaking in Missouri, you mentioned you filmed in saint mm -hmm. is is um, kind of at a standstill. We can yeah. talk a little bit about that. And I also want to hear about what you're, what's coming up next right. for you. You know, it's unfortunate because for a long time, I started as an extra in films here. There was a Bill Murray film here, and I did... Uh, really? Larger than life. Uh -huh. and, uh, larger I got to life. meet Bill Murray. With and, the, and so, uh, elephant. That's right. Uh -huh. And yes. then a league, uh, not a league of their own. Um, it was uh, about the Negro the League baseball oh. team oh, that yes. was filmed here. And I did yes. a number of it. And then all of a sudden, um, this particular administration in Jeff City, this governor, decided that, you know what, we're not going to hand out tax credits mm -hmm. um, to film. They didn't think that it brought an economic benefit. And I believe they're entirely wrong. 
So people go across the river mm -hmm. uh, and where they offer tax credits. They go to uh, Louisiana where Which they offer tax you credits. You have another film you're working on based yeah. on your experiences. Hopefully we can have you back on to I talk know, about to talk that, about that when, we appreciate yeah, when yeah. that happens. So yeah. they can find you though. Yes, absolutely. Dayoffunpictures.com, which is awesome. And 23 Minutes Till Sunrise is that available. Fabulous. It's, it's a wonderful, it's available on Netflix, mm -hmm. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Redbox. 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 Yep. Is it streaming on Netflix? It is not streaming on Netflix yet, but if you go to your um, queue and uh -huh. yeah, and order it up. Yeah, it'll be it'll, right it'll, be, it'll, it'll get quick. there sooner or later. All right. Thank before you 23 so minutes much. of sunrise. Yes. There we so go. Thank, thank you, you very, much. very awesome. much. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, Tara was not done with that barbecue yet. She still has some good stuff going on. Mm -mm -mm. Tara. <laughs> Oh, oh, so sorry. I'm so hungry. I just gonna eat, but I'll wait just for a few minutes. I'm here with BJ, who owns BJ Backyard Barbecue, which is right here on McCausland in Manchester. It's an awesome thoroughfare, so you have to stay busy a lot, right? Absolutely. Yes, we do. I love that. I love, and I know you love that too. Absolutely. Now, Great for business. I want to talk about your business, of course, but I also want to cook and I want to eat a little bit because I can't. <laughs> the smell is so amazing. This is so perfect for the summertime. And look at your cute little picnic paper that it goes in. You can come out of here. They have picnic tables, whatever you want, all the condiments that you need, whatever, right? Yep. What are the items that you actually sell right here? We have turkey ribs, rib tips, ribs, brats, all your bun items, the brats, the polo sausage, the foot long, beef hot dogs, spare ribs. And uh, we have sides. We have must. I'm sorry, not mustard chili. Potato salad coleslaw. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And I'm guessing that's a special little recipe as well. Absolutely. Family. Absolutely. So what are we going to cook here today? I know you have something. We are going to do some turkey ribs. Oh. A lot of people don't know about the tur turkey rib. Yeah, and why is that? Well, it's just, the only place you can really find it is uh, Louisiana. If you Google it, it comes up in Louisiana. It doesn't come up in St. Louis, but we're going to change that. Yes, you are going to change that. And I'm going to be right here eating some of these things, too. And so how do you prepare these? Well, we and first, can you talk for a while so I can have a bite of this? <laughs> you go ahead. Enjoy. Great. Thank you. Well, first off, we start off with good quality meat. We buy everything fresh. We don't freeze it. We don't refrigerate it. It comes in fresh. We season it up and let it sit for 48 hours. But we just take it. Season them up real good. The wind is going to take that mm -hmm. away from us. It is. But you get it and you season it up real good. One thing about our rub is there's no added salt. So we can put as much of this seasoning we want on it and it will not come out salty. That's how we maximize our flavor. I love that. Because you know, a lot of people actually add too much salt to their food to season it. I don't yep. like that. And salt's not really great for you either. So. It sure isn't. No. But those are the turkey ribs. But that's, that's how we good for you. Up. Yes, it is. That's Very good, good for you. you. Yes. And then we don't fry it. A lot of places are frying them. We actually grill them. We take them and we just sit them right on the grill. Let them go. They mm. get a good sear on them five or six minutes on each side and they're ready to go. That's it. So when people come in for lunch, they can be out in how long? Minutes. Three to four minutes. Yeah. Who wouldn't Absolutely. do that? This is so much better than going into a restaurant, sitting down, waiting to be waited on an hour later, probably late for work, going back. And this is so amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, what about when it rains? Can they come right in here? Oh, absolutely. Come on. You're welcome. Right under here. As long as you don't mind the smoke, we got smoke in here. Well, tell me about your family, because I've met a few members of your family. They're so cute. <laughs> you guys have this business together. Yes, we right? are family owned and operated. And well, you know, it all been a blessing. God has been so good to us. Every every door that has closed on us, that God, God opened four or five more doors for us. And we're family owned and operated. My mom is here, my wife is here, my cousin is here. I love it. I can see them over there. Hi. We've all pulled together and <laughs> making it happen. So there's an interesting story behind it, how it started. Do you yes, mind? it is. Just give me a little tidbit on that. Well, my mom asked me to barbecue for her for Mother's Day. Yeah. And uh, I barbecued for her and she said, you know what, BJ, you should, you should be selling this barbecue. I said, oh, that's just my mom, you know, telling me it was that's good. That's a mom. But I took her advice and we tried it and we stepped out there and here we are today. And where do you get the name? Well, the name comes from my son. My son was four years old and he had, <laughs> it's a funny story, he had barbecue sauce from his ankles all the way up to under his nose. Bar barbecue sauce, that is. Yeah. And uh, he said, Daddy, that was good-licious. And I went and I wrote that down and 
It became part of the name. Delicious. What a beautiful name. So once again, BJ, the owner of BJ's Backyard Barbecue, which is right here on McCausland and Manchester. Yes, And what are your hours? We are here Wednesday through Saturday from 1030 to 730 or until we sell out. Now, we're only open until we sell out because we grill everything fresh daily. So once we run out, that's it. We try not to leave any leftovers because we don't refrigerate or have anything for you the next day. It comes out fresh. I love it. Okay, stay with me because we are going to cook some more and eat some more. Okay? Absolutely. And you should see our crew. Our crew has food in their hands right now as we're shooting this. So don't be jealous, you guys, back in the studio. Okay? We'll see you later. He's been soothing us with his euphonic sounds all night. Let's hear it one more time for Gary Shaneberger. <laughs> So rough, will you stay by my side when the going gets tough? We walk with me tonight and lay with me in a field of stone. And lay with me in a field of stone. Will you love me, never leave me, and caress these old bones? We lay with me tonight. Can I call on you in the dark of night? Can I call on you in the dark of night? Will you tell me sweet lies and make everything right? Can I call on you tonight? And lay with me in a field of stone. Lay with me in a field of stone. Will you love me and never leave me and caress his old bones? Will you lay with me tonight? Gary Shaneberger, check him out at ReverbNation.com. More from Gary Shaneberg, find him there. That's right, and listen, we want to thank BJ, our chef from Backyard Burger, so make sure to go check them out. Well, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually Backyard Barbecue, and it's right there on McCausland in Manchester. We had a lot of fun, and we want to thank our guests as well for being here with us. Thank you so much to our audience members and you at home, and especially to Sam's Club and all of our mm -hmm. sponsors. Thank you. Gary Shaneberger, take us out. Dark at night, call on you in the dark at night. Will you tell me sweet lies and make everything right? Can I call on you tonight and stand by me to the end of my days? Stand by me to the end of my days. After everyone's gone, can I ask you to stay? Will you stay with me?